Over the centuries, as we've explored the universe from a scientific perspective, it's become clear that we live in one strange environment. Certain things that make perfect sense and are always repeatable present themselves and allow us to do things like build cars, use electricity, and make YouTube videos. But from another perspective, the universe, and indeed the multiverse, should it exist, makes very little intuitive sense and offers possibilities that aren't so clean cut and often are a little spooky. So here are 10 spooky possibilities of the multiverse. Number 10, Boltzmann Brains. Infinity is a funny thing, because with it comes the implication that if you wait long enough, then anything that's possible, no matter how remote, can and will eventually happen. This is simply because you have an infinite amount of time to wait for a chance occurrence. This all comes from a thought experiment and argument that says that it's more likely for a single thinking brain to briefly form in a void than it is for a thinking brain to form the way it actually did in the universe. While this is debated, it does allow for one odd possibility. If you have infinite time in a universe, whether a dead one or otherwise, then all things possible will eventually come to be by random chance. This includes some type of thinking being randomly popping into existence, at least for a time, including the most powerful supercomputer possible in some kind of a universe. It even allows for such an entity to have false memories of a much longer existence than it actually had. But if such a thing were to pop into existence in a dead universe far further along than ours, then it might look at the blackness and wonder what the universe might once have been like. It may even do so to avoid madness. It could choose to simulate a universe, and perhaps even exist within it, to avoid the cold and the dark of its reality. If such a thing is possible, even marginally so, are we the fever dreams of an otherwise insane supercomputer living in the void of a dead universe running a simulation? I hope not. Number 9. Penrose Cosmology one possibility within cosmology is the question of whether our universe was actually the first one, or another in a potentially infinite series of recurring universes and Big Bangs. Originating with physicist Roger Penrose, this hypothesis is known as conformal cyclic cosmology, and it offers some interesting possibilities in that it may be possible to detect echoes, or ghosts in a way, of at least the last of these past universes. It could be that objects like black holes might have left their mark on the current universe and imprinted themselves on the cosmic microwave background radiation. And there are some early indications that this might actually be the case. But one other possibility is a little disconcerting. At the end of the last universe, there may have been highly advanced civilizations present, if the physical rules of that universe were the same as our own. These presumably would have been very ancient civilizations, living at the very end of their universe and at a technological level perhaps as high as was possible in that universe. If so, they may have developed technologies far beyond what we can imagine, enough that they might have found a way to imprint a message on the CMB that might be detectable. If so, it would be a message of an age in excess of 13.8 billion years, from before our universe existed, from a civilization long sent to extinction by the end of their own. If they had received a similar message in their universe from the past, they might even forward it, perhaps leading to a layered group of messages from previous universes. If it could even be deciphered, I wonder what such a group of messages might say. Could we do such a thing in the far future? Perhaps all we could say is that humans were once here. Number 8. The Strange Mystery of the Present We live our lives in the present, the now. Anything else is in the immutable past, or lies in our future. But for something so ingrained in our very existence, in reality the present doesn't actually exist. We may perceive it, but the concept is not really present in physics, and the rules of the universe itself. But even within our own brains, there really isn't a present either. It takes time for neurons to communicate and message each other, no matter how small that amount of time is. In physics, this becomes far more evident. When looking across vast distances of space, we see objects as they were, not as they are. So when looking at the moon, you see it as it was just over a second ago. When you look at the star Betelgeuse, you see it as it was almost 650 years ago. And given that it's set to go supernova, it may well already have. We just can't see it yet. But then there is the question of the future. 
No matter what we do, we are always traveling forward into the future. And the universe allows us to speed that up, in a sense, simply by traveling at high relativistic speeds, or getting too close to an immense gravity source like a black hole. But nowhere to be found is the concept of an absolute present. Instead, it's ambiguous. Your present is not my present. And, in the end, the present as we perceive it only exists in our heads. Number 7. We Might Live in a Black Hole One possibility in regards to the Big Bang was that it was in fact a result of the formation of a black hole in another universe. This is actually a more attractive idea than it might seem, since it does solve many of the problems presented by the Big Bang, but not all. The concept involves Einstein's general relativity, which fundamentally links space and time to the point that under extreme conditions, such as inside a black hole, time and space can essentially switch places, or at least become ambiguous. This is important in answering questions like where in the universe did the Big Bang actually occur, since we think of giant explosions as having an origin point. But this is not the case with the Big Bang. Its origin point lies not anywhere in space, but in time. Think of it like this. The universe is like the surface of an expanding balloon. The point where the balloon started to inflate is inside the balloon, and is not anywhere on its surface. So the inside of the balloon represents the past, but not a physical origin point from the perspective of the surface of the balloon for where it actually started to inflate. This leads us to relativity. An observer outside a black hole can see it as occupying a physical point in space. The black hole has a location. But once inside the black hole, its location is not a point in space, but rather a point in time. As you move towards the singularity inside the black hole, it can be said you are traveling towards the future. But relativity breaks down here, so we can only guess what happens when you actually get to that singularity. We only know that the singularity lies in your future, no matter what. It may be that this is the creation of a new universe where all of the matter that the black hole has ever accumulated gets expelled out into a new environment of space-time. One thing among others that this model addresses is the so-called horizon problem with the cosmic background radiation, which shows us that the early universe was really homogeneous when it shouldn't have been. Now the natural question is could you travel to another universe through a black hole? Not likely. It would scramble any information sent through it, including you. And there are still some questions that the black hole universe idea doesn't explain well. But if it is the case, then we are, in a sense, living inside a black hole. Number 6. Many Worlds What exactly constitutes our worldview? It seems clean cut, reality. But what if every time something in the universe changed, even on a quantum mechanical scale, then a new reality, or a new universe, was formed and split off from the universe we know? This is the many worlds interpretation and could mean that your reality is always splitting off into alternate, sometimes very different, realities. This would lead to a dizzying array of countless other universes all sitting right beside each other. One might be different from another only based on the position of an atom, or entirely different realities where you exist, but under very different conditions living a very different life. You may own a different car, or have a completely different job, or even more broadly, in another universe, human civilization may have occurred earlier, or developed more rapidly, and might be a galaxy-spanning empire. Or civilization may not have developed at all, and humans in another universe may still live in Stone Age conditions, or may never have evolved sufficient intelligence for technology, or we may never have existed at all, and the alternate world is still ruled by dinosaurs and their descendants, perhaps intelligent and spacefaring in their own right all because, in that universe, their extinction asteroid missed. The scenarios possible under the many worlds interpretation are many indeed. Number 5. The Infinite Universe If the many worlds interpretation isn't strange enough, it turns out that it's not the only way for infinite varying copies of you to exist. This take on it stems from an open question within cosmology. Just how large is the universe? The answer is, we don't know and may never be able to know because, well, we can't see that far. We essentially view a bubble of the universe, known as the observable universe, because it's what we can observe given that light has only had a finite time to travel to us since the Big Bang. But we know that the observable universe isn't all that's out there. 
The part of the universe that we can't observe could extend only a little further than what we can see, or it could be much, much larger. And there is increasing evidence that it is indeed much, much larger. And there may be no limit. It could stretch on to infinity. We simply cannot see enough of the universe to answer the question. If it is infinite, then many worlds becomes possible again in a different way. In an infinite universe, if you travel in one direction long enough, you will come across a very similar, perhaps even almost exact set of circumstances from where you've previously been, such as Earth. This allows for planets very similar, but still different from Earth. But given that it's infinity, it also allows for planets nearly identical to Earth, filled with humans nearly identical to us, doing nearly identical things. Go further and you'll see another such variant, and onward to infinity, meaning that there are an infinite number of such variants of you. This would also work for any alien civilizations you might come across along the way. You might find a planet full of intelligent aliens, and then see an almost identical variant the further you go. This would be a scary prospect if it were some all-powerful, hostile machine civilization that you barely survived an encounter with only to encounter the same thing again, only slightly different. While it has never been established if the universe is finite or infinite, there is the problem of just how far you would have to go just to encounter a copy of you. It is beyond immense, so much so you likely could never reach the closest copy of yourself. And while controversial, the idea of an infinite universe is probably no more likely than a finite one. But one thing seems certain. The universe itself is likely much, much larger than what we can see, and as such, there will be parts of the universe that we will never be able to know anything about. Number 4. Only One Universe Perhaps even stranger than the idea of many worlds or an infinite universe is the concept that this universe is the only one. This would be a situation where there is no multiverse, there is only the universe. And if it is finite, then it truly is all that there is. That's not too disturbing, and indeed has been a standard way of looking at things for a long time. After all, the word universe implies all that there is, has been, or ever will be. The problem is that the universe doesn't have to be the way that it is, so far as we know. There are a number of values governing the universe that if they were slightly different, then the nature and behavior of matter and the laws of physics might be radically different. One wrong value, and matter itself might not even be able to exist as it does. Even the universe itself might not exist, and under different conditions might collapse back in on itself shortly after forming. Yet the universe exists, and so does matter. Then you come to life. Once again, a number of factors had to be just so for the universe to support life. Then, once again, yet even more factors had to be right to form intelligent life, us and even more factors played in to make it possible for us to study the universe and attempt to understand it. And all of this had to have happened at exactly this time, since earlier in the universe's history, the matter needed to form planets didn't yet exist, and wouldn't if the universe didn't allow for stars to form. It's been argued that this problem goes away if the multiverse exists. We simply live in the universe that won the lottery as far as the conditions needed to support life go. Most other universes might not be so nice. If there isn't a multiverse, then ultimately all these ideas, known generally as the anthropic principle, accomplish is to say that the universe must be a certain way for us to even be here observing it. The universe allows for our existence. It doesn't really say more than that, but it does give us clues in understanding the universe. But nevertheless, speculating beyond that does paint a somewhat spooky picture of the conditions we live in to the point that our very existence is highly unlikely. Yet, here we are. Number 3. Other Dimensions Our day-to-day -day existence is governed by dimensions. We move through our three-dimensional world, but there is also time, which is usually counted as a dimension of its own, where we are always moving forward in it. But it's been long suspected that there are other dimensions that are not so readily evident. String theory, for example, envisions a 10-dimensional universe, M-theory 11, and others. And there are hypotheses that state that things like dark matter might be matter in another dimension interacting gravitationally with the universe we see. What these dimensions represent, however, is not so clear. For example, some suggestions for the existence of these dimensions include that some of them are invisible to us simply because they are curled up, and may have been more evident at the beginning of the universe. 
Other options are that wormholes, should they prove to be possible, represent tunnels through another dimension connecting two points in spacetime, or even as an explanation for spooky action at a distance, where two particles may be linked across vast amounts of space in what we see, but in another dimension may be much more closely connected. What this might mean and whether we could ever make use of these other dimensions is not yet clear, and probably won't be without a much more complete description of the universe. Number 2. The Destruction of the Universe One particularly spooky question about the multiverse is do individual universes end? What will be the ultimate fate of our universe, everything that is? This is not certain, but one take is that it will simply become a cinder universe full of evaporating black holes and iron stars that will simply fade away into infinite darkness and a heat death, where there just isn't enough available energy anymore to drive entropy, or at some point, it could all start over with another Big Bang event. But there are some ways it might end before that time. One involves the stability of the proton. Protons appear to be very stable things, apparently capable of lasting for untold amounts of time. But maybe not forever. In fact, a lot of theoretical physics might be incorrect if they don't eventually decay. Eventually could be septillion years from now or far more, but eventually. This would mean that the universe would at some point in the distant future decay. But there's also a way the end of the universe could come much faster. We don't know if the universe exists at its lowest energy state. Think of it like this. You roll a bowling ball down the side of a mountain, and halfway down it gets stuck precariously on a ledge. There the bowling ball sits, not having fallen completely to the bottom of the mountain. But say there is a wind gust or a passing bird accidentally brushes the bowling ball with its wing, just enough to push it off the ledge. Then the bowling ball continues down until it reaches the bottom of the mountain and stops there, and there is no way for it to go any further. The universe may be a bowling ball on a ledge, and if some event upsets the current state of affairs, the universe could tunnel to a lower energy state. This would be catastrophic on an almost unimaginable scale, it would lead to a wave of destruction propagating through the universe at the speed of light, for which there would be no warning beforehand. Left in its wake would be new, altered laws of physics, matter in a different configuration, and everything we know would be utterly destroyed and reconfigured. The only consolation in this scenario is that it would occur at the speed of light, as fast as fast can be, so we'd never know what hit us. Number 1. The Unexplained one big problem with the multiverse, and indeed the universe, is that as much as we try, there are mysteries that we may simply never be able to solve. The multiverse itself is one, since it may not be possible to ever meaningfully measure it. We may never even know anything about it if it even exists. And as far as the universe goes, there are many unanswered questions that may always remain unanswered. So here are just a few of the open questions within physics that we may never understand. Why does time move forward? The arrow only points in one direction, the future. But there's seemingly no reason for this other than entropy. Most other things, such as gravity, can be run backwards and look the same. Another question is the nature of dark matter and dark energy. We see the effects of both in the universe, but not what's actually creating the effect. It's possible that they are forms of matter and energy, but it's also been suggested that they might instead be the effects of a fifth unknown force in the universe. Why is there far more matter in the universe than antimatter? Why does the moon almost perfectly eclipse the sun from the vantage point of Earth, right exactly at the same time that there happens to be a civilization living on Earth that can understand what it is? The list goes on, but as one final mystery to make you go hmm on this fine Halloween evening, I offer one more perhaps unexplainable feature of this universe. It's called the Axis of Evil, and it represents a strange feature in the cosmic microwave background radiation. This radiation should be the same any direction we look, and it is, mostly. The same goes for the universe. It should look more or less the same in any direction we look, and it does, mostly. This is the Copernican Principle, that we have no particularly special vantage point in the universe. But maybe that's wrong. The cosmic microwave background radiation does have some anomalies. For example, one half of what we see is very slightly cooler than the other half, and there are others, and they all correlate to the plane of our solar system. This should not be, 
and for a long time scientists wondered if there was an observational error or if things were being interpreted wrong. That was until June of 2020 when the observations of the anomalies were confirmed with a completely different instrument. Apparently, our position in the universe is in some way very special, or at least unlikely. What this means is yet another unknown. Thanks for listening. I am futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, currently eyeing my cache of Halloween candy suspiciously. I do this every year. I buy tons, intending to stock up on sweets for the entirety of the coming year. But there is an anomaly. It never lasts that long, sometimes not even half that time. It's certainly not me. I blame dark matter, and be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer, and subscribe to my channels for regular in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.